Welcome to Books on Point. The book Closing the Gap gives an overview of the fourth industrial re revolution rather, and its impact and various issues that it set out in various sectors in South Africa and the continent. It explores the previous industrial revolutions that have led up to this point and outlines what South Africa's position has been throughout each one. Written from an African perspective, Closing the Gap addresses the challenges and fears by pointing to the opportunities presented by new technologies. For more, we're joined by the author of the book, Professor Chilidzi Marala, who is also the Vice Chancellor of the University of Johannesburg. Prof, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, th thank you very much, Nastasia, for inviting me to come and uh, engage on this book. So talk to me about what inspired you to write it. Well, you know, I've written um, 18 books, and one of the things that has often disturbed me was that uh, none of my books are available in bookstores in South Africa, you know. And then I realized that maybe I am not writing for the South African audience. Uh, and then I decided to write this book so that it can be accessible to our people. Uh, obviously, uh, 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 matters of the fourth industrial revolution can often lead to heavy mathematics. Uh, so this book is far from that. It is a book that anybody, even... Uh, a metric student can be able to read the book and understand what these technologies that are changing the face of, uh, of our planet are all about and what we can do about it. The one thing the reader will pick up immediately when they start uh, going through the book is that you outline the first three revolutions before we get to the current one. But the, there's the one thing that, I, that stood out to me was the fact that the fears around the fourth industrial revolution that we're currently seeing were well, not new. We've seen them in previous industrial revolutions. Uh, perhaps you can take us through some of that. No, absolutely. Because, uh, 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 you know, uh, when the first machine was introduced to replace what human beings were doing in the world of work, uh, it, was, it was a threat. Uh, obviously, uh, the machines are, are, are doing the same today. It's just that they are more intelligent and they can do much more things. Than the, than the machines of um, 300 years ago. So the fear is okay. still lingering. But what, one thing that is actually quite special about the fourth industrial revolution is that uh, it seems uh, it is actually not only taking away our, our jobs, it is taking away our identity. Uh, because, you know, when you have a machine that can think and that can do things that are done by human beings, um, that you can talk to. Uh, the question that uh, naturally arises is, who are we? Who are we? Who are we as human beings? What is our role uh, on this planet? And what can we do about it? You know. So it uh, it touches the the, the 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 deeper inner aspects of ourselves, uh, which is uh, our identities. There's a lot happening from a global perspective, especially when you look at China's advancements. In terms of South Africa and where we are, where do we sit uh, when it comes to the fourth industrial revolution? Well, we have pockets of excellence, you know, uh, and some of the technologies that... Uh, um, we can still hear can you, still Prof. Hear yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know... Uh, so, 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 so there are progress of excellence in South Africa. In fact, some of the big algorithms uh, uh, that are used in artificial intelligence, such as uh, the Gaussian mixture models, are actually discovered here in South Africa. So, uh, 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 so we are we are we are not completely out of the loop. Where we have a weakness is infusing these technologies into our production, into the products that we actually. Uh, uh, consume. For example, if we come to agriculture here in South Africa, how much of the fourth industrial revolution technologies do we use in order to increase uh, productivity? If we come to manufacturing, um, does it explain that our textile uh, industry has disappeared? If we were to invest in uh, fourth industrial revolution technology, can we be able to recover some of these uh, uh, industries? So I, I think uh, there is a mixed 
it's a mixed uh, 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 you know, assessment of our ability to capture the opportunities that are going to emerge as a result of the fourth industrial revolution. Right. There's some exciting things happening, yet at the same time, the recurring theme that people always bring up is the issue of data and data privacy. Um, you know, what can be done from our perspective on the continent or in South Africa in order for us to, you know, um, stem some of those fears or at least own some of our data? Well, I mean, uh, my book actually covers that quite well. Um, it's, it's one of the sections. Uh, I have a section on, on on industry, on finance, and on society. I have a, a section on, on on data. And cybersecurity is very, very important. And cybersecurity is even becoming more important given the fact that our ability to compute uh, is improving. We, we can now use quantum computers to actually compute something that will make many of the security features that are in our system vulnerable. I think what we need to do is to understand what data is all about. We need to understand uh, 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 what are some of the elements of our data that we need to protect. Uh, we need to understand how do we deploy cybersecurity technologies to make sure that we use our data and it is not exploited often to our detriment. Right. Before I let you go, Prof, Chapter 16 talks about market efficiency. You asked a very important question towards the end, uh, and it reads, what kind of skills do we need in order to produce a workforce that uh, creates market efficiency? Um, to take it even further, what kind of skills do we need now to meet some of these developments that are currently happening? I think overall we need uh, people who understand both human and, uh, humans and societies as well as technology. Because this fourth industrial revolution is merging uh, uh, industries that were isolated in the past. For, the, for example, now you merge linguistics, and I have a chapter on linguistics, with mathematics and statistics, something that we never really thought you could be able to merge. In fact, when our students used to go to university, if you were going to do linguistics, you were absolutely not going to be doing computer science. And if you are doing computer science, you are absolutely not going to be doing uh, linguistics. Today, we need people who understand language, who understand society, who understand technology. And if we are able to do that, then we are going to succeed in the fourth industrial revolution. Prof, thank you so much for your time. That is uh, Professor Marala, who is also the University of Vice, uh, rather the University of Johannesburg's Vice Chancellor, and is the author of a new book titled "Closing the Gap." That's it from me, Nastasia Arons. I'll be back with you tomorrow.